Sports Sports Desk, KOMU8 Sports. We're, 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 going, we're going on attack and uh, bring it on. Missouri football head coach Barry Odom going on the offensive this afternoon. And good evening, everybody. We've got a lot to get to tonight. High school basketball highlights, a battle of ranked teams at the Hearn Center, and basketball for a good cause. But we begin tonight with the sanctions that have rocked Mizzou athletics today. Barry Odom held his first public press conference since the news broke that his team will be ineligible for postseason play next season. Odom's attitude, however, hints at more at resilience. If, if the Committee on Infractions uh, doesn't take a stand on this, uh, through the appeal, then it leaves a lot of gray area out there on, on how to handle um, the approach of doing everything you're supposed to do. Former Mizzou basketball player and current chair of the Board of Curators, John Sunvold, had this to say, quote, inconsistent actions by the NCAA continue to erode its credibility credibility. If it doesn't admit and correct this unprecedented fault, many Power 5 schools like Missouri will question the need for the NCAA as a governing body. As our appeal moves forward, I appreciate the support of the SEC and Commissioner Greg Sankey. When Mizzou wins the SEC East next year, he should do the right thing and invite one of its good standing members to play in the SEC championship game. That's quite a statement from Mr. Sunvold. We've heard just about everyone mention it already, and Barry Odom not surprisingly mentioned it in his press conference that Mizzou is currently putting together its appeal. We don't know when that may be filed, but if that appeal does go through, Mizzou will face a committee of five members and have to prove one of four errors by the Committee on Infractions. First, a factual finding is clearly contrary to the evidence presented to the Committee on Infractions panel. Second, the facts found by the committee aren't a violation of the NCAA Constitution and bylaws. Or, the third, they could prove that there was a procedural error. Now, Mizzou likely doesn't have a case with any of these three. Where the Tigers might have some luck is the fourth standard, which is that the committee abused its discretion. There is an argument to be made that the Tigers' punishment is not in line with punishments similar cases received. It's also unorthodox to punish a school by removing scholarships when the violation is not recruiting related. The Tigers will also likely argue that their compliance was not taken under consideration properly. On a lighter note, we've got some Friday night hoops for you. So we start with the scorching hot Rockbridge Bruins taking on the Olathe West Owls. The 14-3 Bruins taking it to the hardwood, and they're getting it on defense early. Alston Mason thinks he's got a layup, but Quentin Brown throwing a block party on Providence. The Brew Crew loving it on All-American night. Now on the offense, Isaiah Mosley stops, pops, buckets. Just getting started moments later, Mosley from the corner, nothing but net. Later in that quarter, Dewan Harris, cross court, hits Noah Patrick, give him all three. We'll go to the third quarter now. Brown, get on my poster. Rockbridge rolls, 88-66. Let's head up north. Battle, taking on Moberly today in front of a packed crowd at Moberly High. Right after tip-off, we got a cool moment here. Senior guard Savion Thorpe, who sustained an injury earlier this season, gets in the game, starts Moberly off with a nice little layup. He gets the crutches and then gets some love from the battle head coach Brian Meany before exiting the court. Let's go to the game now. Maricus Gant drives hard, gets the lay-in. Moberly comes back though. That's Braden Wetrich with the silky turnaround J, and then this time it's Zavon Ward. Tristan Meany, he hits the floater. Battle takes this one. They're now 11 and 3. How about to the Hearn Center? Let's do some gymnastics. 16th ranked Mizzou gymnastics. They took on the 8th ranked Crimson Tide. And junior Aspen Tucker starts things off strong for Mizzou on the vault. She's actually averaging a 9.8 on the vault this year. Later in the vault session, Morgan Porter. She's almost averaging a 9.8 on the vault. I don't know how they do that. My legs would snap if I tried to land like that. And Alabama, though, they had to close it out. Mizzou made a run late, but the Tide, they hang on. They win by 0 0.2 points. Over to Mizzou Arena, where Mizzou's fourth annual Rally for Ryan event returns tomorrow. Last year, Mizzou raised $60,000 for pediatric cancer research. Mizzou has increased how much money they raised each of the first three years, and the team has done pretty well too. They've gone 3-0 in those games. Ryan Luce, who is the namesake of the event, is now in remission, but her dad, who is assistant athletic director, said the event brings back memories of the past. 
time, uh, it's a celebration because she is doing so well, but it, it takes you back in time to when she was sick, and uh, that obviously tugs at your heartstrings a little bit too. That game is tomorrow night at 7.30, and we will, of course, have highlights and reaction here on KOMU. That's going to do it for me. Have a good weekend, everybody.